Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome to USD 305 school board meeting. It starts at 5 o'clock. High five. Yeah, high Rocky five. Gavel. Huh. Got her. Welcome. Good to have you here. Good to have this room full like it is. Just the, you in front, take a look around behind you. It, it is packed back there, standing room only. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, do we have additions or corrections to the agenda? Madam President, there is a personnel addendum at your place, and we do need a executive session for this evening for personnel. Uh, do we need it for negotiations as well? We do not. Okay, thank you. Personnel only then? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I have a motion. Carol? Madam President, I move acceptance of the agenda, of the agenda with the changes noted. Jim? Second. Uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried, uh, five zero. Next on our agenda is recognitions and presentations. Uh, we will start with you do make a difference award uh, with Jennifer Bradford Vernon. Thank you. The You Make a Difference Award is presented to staff members whose exemplary actions support students, colleagues, and the mission of Salina Public Schools. Recipients of these awards receive a lapel pin and a handwritten note personally delivered by a Board of Education member. Tracy Olson, Food Service Bookkeeper at Oakdale Elementary School. Oakdale Elementary School staff nominated Tracy for her level of caring for Oakdale children. Tracy and her staff always have a hug and a smile for the children coming through the lunch line. The Oakdale staff members want her to know how lucky they feel that she works in their building. Thank you, Tracy, for making a difference at Oakdale. Kimberly Stouffer fourth grade teacher at Sunset Elementary School. Kimberly took the lead on designing an English language arts revolutionary war unit breakout activity. The result was a highly engaging activity where students worked in teams and practiced collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and problem solving. Thank you, Kimberly, for making a difference at Sunset. Tiffany Wesolowski, nurse at Cottonwood Elementary School. It has been said that Nurse Wesolowski may be the busiest person at Cottonwood. During the first semester, she had 3,315 visits to her office. <laughs> she is always friendly and professional, known to build great relationships with students, parents, and staff. Thank you, Tiffany, for truly taking care of the Cottonwood family and making a difference. And now we'll begin the Superintendent's Excellence Awards with Dr. Hardy. Our first group of awards this evening goes to students who qualified for basketball at Central High School. They were the Salina Invitational Champions and a 5A sub-state champions who made Salina Central basketball history with a run of back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back state tournament appearances. Ranking second all-time in Kansas basketball history, the Mustangs set single season records for the most three-pointers at 230. Doug Finch is their coach, Ryan Modine, Derek Witt, and Mark Ramsey, assistant coaches. Will you please join Dr. Hardy in the front? Will all the basketball students please line up as well? As I call your name, please step toward Dr. Hardy so you can receive your award. And after you've received your award, please walk to the end of the line and remain standing until all the students have been recognized. Team members are Cameron DeMars, Sr. <laughs> Brogan Richardson, Sr. He received an honorable mention, ABCTL. David Grammer, Sr. 
set a school record with 38 points versus Newton, SIT first team, and AVCTL honorable mention. Christian Tedlock, Jr. Ben Driver, Sr. Aaron Watson, Jr. Harper Williams, Sr. ABCTL, first team, SIT, first team. KBCA, honorable mention, third team, Allstate. Mark Grammer, Sr. Salina Invitational, MVP. SIT, first team, and AVCTL, second team. Aiden Spear, sophomore. Javon Burnett, Jr. Reed McHenry, sophomore. Kaden Kikafer, sophomore. Caleb Glenn, senior. Would you please allow the Board of Education to congratulate you now? Congratulations. Well done. Yeah. Good job. Congratulations. Good to have you. And as you're all aware, um, we do call students' names, and sometimes they're in other sports, and everyone's busy with other activities as well. So. Our next group of awards goes to Science Olympiad students at South High School who qualified for state. Matt Mosher is their coach. Matt is unable to attend this evening due to a tennis meet, so Jeff Geist will fill in for him. Will you please join Dr. Hardy in the front? And will all the Science Olympiad students please line up as well? Gavin Jones, Jr. Diana Geist, sophomore. Zozan Reitz, sophomore. And Om Patel, sophomore. Would you please allow the Board of Education to congratulate you now? Thanks so much for what you do for kids. Our next awards go to the Science Olympiad students at Central High School who qualified for state. Gary Goodwin and Tyler Barnes are the coaches. And will our Science Olympiad students please line up next to Dr. Hardy and their sponsors. Qualifying and competing, Phoebe Helton, senior. Cora Powers, senior, second at regionals in thermodynamics. Matthew Rosado, senior, second at regionals in thermodynamics. Madison Pham, junior, third at regionals in astronomy. Caleb Klein, junior, Keaton Oxendale, freshman, second at regionals in mousetrap vehicle. <laughs> Christian Fairclavega, <clears throat> junior, second at regionals in Fermi questions. Ashley Stovall, senior, fifth at regionals in designer jeans. Would you please allow the Board of Education to congratulate you? Very impressive. Congratulations. Indeed. Congratulations. Indeed. Impressive. Well done. Yeah. Fermi? Thank you. Well, I want to see my own strap. What got it? Fermi? It's like. Thank you. 
Okay. Let's, okay. Way up there. It's out in space. Yep. Absolutely. Next, we recognize robotic students at Salina Central. Sheila Schaefer is the coach. Will you please join Dr. Hardy in the front? And will all the robotic students please line up next to Dr. Hardy and Mrs. Schaefer? Team members are Rose Alvers, freshman, Drew Allstadt, freshman, Jordan Allstadt, sophomore, Parker Armstrong, senior, Jasmine Bledsoe, freshman, Nathaniel Cabada, freshman. Rebecca Franklin, sophomore. Gail Garcia, junior. Asia Gomes, sophomore. Abigail Henning, freshman. Aaron Jackson, freshman. Ariane Cavat, freshman. Wesley Owens, freshman. Colton Prothrow, freshman. Hannah Queen, sophomore. Aris Vanderford, freshman. Patrick Zrubrek, sophomore. Please allow the Board of Education to congratulate you. Thanks so much. Thank you for all that you do. I think this is great. Keep up the good work, you guys. Well done. Congratulations. Good job. Congrats. We appreciate your hard work. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. We We now recognize students involved in Life Smarts at Central High School who qualified for state. Shelby Dinkle and Josh Oldenettle are the coaches. Will you please join Dr. Hardy in the front? And will all the Life Smart students please line up as well? Molly Michaelis, Jr. Hannah Pip. Senior, Gage Burmaster, Senior, Jeremy Vopel, Senior, William Panchella, Senior. Would you please allow the Board of Education to congratulate you now? Thank you very much. It's hard to explain. But you've got it. It's like scholars, but like in real life, much like. Okie doke. Congratulations. Our last group of awards this evening goes to students involved in economics at South High School who qualified at state. Colin Carlson is their coach. Will you please join Dr. Hardy in the front? And will all of the economics students please line up next to Dr. Hardy and their sponsor? The following students qualified for David Ricardo, beginner division of the state competition. Jaden DeGarmo, Hunter Dunshee, Eileen Escobedo, Zosin Reitz, Nathan Streeter.
The following students qualified for the Adam Smith Advanced Division of the State Competition and qualified for the final championship round against Shawnee Mission Northwest before achieving runner-up recognition. Emily Allen, Seth Carter, Zach Davidson, Carter Granzella, <laughs> Senior. <laughs> Trey Turner, would you please allow the Board of Education to congratulate you now? Thank you Uh, thank you, students. This is always one of our, our most fa or my favorite thing to do. I think everybody else, too. Uh, next, the Challenge Awards present presentations with Dina Horst, State School Board Representative. Hopefully, they stay there until I want them to move. Well, good evening. It is my pleasure to be here to honor and celebrate great success stories in our state, including the great success stories that are going on in the Salina School District. Four years ago, in the fall of 2015, the Kansas State Board of Education announced a new vision for education. Kansas leads the world in the success of each student. The schools being honored to here tonight are making a real difference for our most at risk populations. Knowing firsthand because I was a teacher in this district, so it really is exciting to be able to come back and give all these wonderful awards. But I know how much hard work and total commitment it takes to put forth the effort that had to be put forth for this award to be granted to these specific schools. So I'm extremely proud and pleased to honor these schools with the 2018 Challenge Award. I was in Washington, Kansas, <laughs> okay. a little bit earlier today, and I was on a tour with the kids. and. One of them said, well, why is it 2018? I said, well, you just took the test, and we can't move that fast <laughs> in figuring out who would win these awards. So we're always a year behind. And just so you know, this award recognizes schools for outstanding achievement and uncommon accomplishment based on Kansas math and reading assessment results, chronic absentee rate. If there were any high schools involved, it would be their graduation rate that would have caused them to uh, be selected. And the socioeconomic status of those taking the test. And actually, that's the first qualifier. To better align with Kansas' vision for education, the process for selecting the schools for the award were, was modified this year. In previous years, the awards have been given to grade levels. This year, we're recognizing the entire building so everyone can celebrate the success in that building. 
And I want to take a moment to thank the members of the Confidence in Kansas Public Education Task Force, it's a mouthful, for their vision in creating this award and for their ongoing work to make certain that we each year can recognize the hard work of our teachers, our administrators, and our students. In the 16 years since this award was created, we have significantly improved the performance of Kansas students in reading and math. And thank you to all of you for helping make that possible. Because it doesn't matter whether you are a teacher, an administrator, a student, board members, you're involved too. And we thank you for that. We also have narrowed the gap between ethnic groups and between our economically disadvantaged students and those who are not disadvantaged. But there is still a lot of work to do. So that's why we're asking that all of you who are Challenge Award schools to keep on pushing forward, reach for the stars, make things happen in your buildings. And beyond that, also share your successful strategies with others, with other districts, with other schools, so that Kansas, all of Kansas can benefit and we can make even greater progress in our effort to work toward our vision for Kansas education. You know, Kansas is blessed with extraordinary administrators and educators whose leadership guides our students to achieve what even they believe that they can, the heights that they believe that they can achieve. So first, there's a gentleman amongst us that I'd like to recognize for his excellent leadership. And that's our interim superintendent, Dr. Jim Hardy. So if you join with me and with <laughs> And then there are some administrators of buildings that I think are probably in the audience that know they're going to be recognized here pretty soon. So if they'd stand. No administrators? Yes. Yeah. Hey, fine. <laughs> and their staff. So if those of you that are present would also stand. I know there's some of you. I know who. <laughs> and uh, some of you know that I do sub in the district, and I can tell you, board, there's some wonderful things happening in these classrooms. And it gives me great pleasure to walk in and see the planning and all of the wonderful things that are happening and the way the students just, their leadership is marvelous also. So, um, Dr. Hardy, it's something I've been asking every administrator if he or she would like to say a few words. So if you have something you'd like to say now, now's your chance. Well, <laughs> I'm very honored that you give me that opportunity. I guess I would just speak up and say that we are so blessed to have so many wonderful teachers in our district. And I think the folks that are being recognized this evening are a good example of that. So we're, we're very fortunate. We appreciate that you came here to make this presentation this evening. So thank you, Dina. 
it's my pleasure. There are a lot of schools and a lot of districts in the state of Kansas. 185 of those schools in, in 98 districts are being, have been honored or will be honored with the 2018 Challenge Awards. And this evening, it's my honor to present the following schools with one of the 2018 Challenge Awards. And I suppose maybe you want them just to come up front and all at once or, okay. And then they can be, can uh, go by the board. Husner Elementary School. And if you want, if you want to present them. Oakdale Elementary School. Well done. Thank you. Schilling Elementary School. And then the school I spent many years at and uh, certainly know many of the staff members even today, Salina South Middle School. Thank you. 
just a little bit more. <laughs> Keep on setting high expectations. Keep providing the support your students need. And keep believing that Kansans can lead the world in the success of each student. And as you do that work, just remember that the pride, the support, the gratitude of everyone on the state board. There are 10 of us. And the State Department of Education all are there for you. Congratulations and thank you very much for all you do for Kansas education and making it as great as it is. Thank you. Next on our agenda is approval of consent agenda items. They include minutes of the April 9th, 2019 regular meeting, personnel report, treasurer's report, investment report, journal entries, approve encumbrance listings, which include to jobs for America's graduates, Kansas in the amount of $26,000 for four program specialists at high schools for the 2019-2020 school year, to Bimbo Bakeries USA for bread products for food and nutrition services in the amount of $64,734 for the 2019-2020 school year, to Highland Dairy in the amount of $229,456 for dairy products for food and nutrition services for 2019-2020 school year, and to Fisher Tracks Incorporated in the amount of $78,802 to get the Salina Stadium tracks structurally sprayed and restriped, and last, to approve the solid waste disposal and recycling proposal to Salina Iron and Metal Company for solid waste disposal services for an estimated weekly amount of $675.49. Do I have a motion to approve? Jim? Madam President, I move we approve the consent agenda items. Second. I second it. Are there any questions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Next is our public forum. At this time, uh, anyone from the, pu from the audience may step forward and have comments with the board. I don't see anyone at this time, so we'll move forward to the action agenda. To South High Forensics Out of State Field Trips with Megan Hageman. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, we have had South High students having tremendous success in forensics and debate competition, and they have qualified to attend three national tournaments this summer. The first is the National Individual Events Tournament of Championships Tournament. That is in Omaha, Nebraska, May 10th through the 12th. Um, we are leaving after AP testing so that we can make sure our kids get those AP tests taken, um, and then we will go for the weekend, so they're only going to miss about half a day of school for that travel. We have five students who have qualified to represent Salina South at that tournament. That tournament's a little bit harder to qualify for. You have to attend bid tournaments and you have to get multiple bids. Um, Kansas has only had one bid tournament historically until the last two years, and that was the Salina Central Tournament for many years. Um, this year, Kansas has five bid tournaments, and so we were able to travel and compete at those, and those tournaments are much more difficult to do well at, so our students did an excellent job and qualified for that. Um, we also have two coaches and judges attending that tournament with us. Um, and we will be on a college campus doing competitions um, and in hotels for that tournament. The second tournament is the NCFL National Catholic Forensics League Tournament in Milwaukee, Milwaukee Wisconsin, May 23rd through 28th. 
Um, we are leaving at 10 a.m. on the 23rd so that students may come in and make up their finals before they leave so they don't have to come back afterwards and get those taken care of. Um, so they will only miss a little bit on that last finals day. Um, we have 14 students that have qualified to represent Salina South at that tournament. This tournament's a little bit easier to qualify for. You attend a qualifier if you place in um, the top five then you qualify to represent your school and your diocese at that tournament. This tournament's unique because it gives younger students an opportunity to compete at nationals. There are some events that are specifically for freshmen and sophomores, so they are able to compete against students of their own caliber at those tournaments. And we have lots of tournaments that have done very well and lots of students that have done very well competing in those events. We have seven coaches and judges and sponsors that are gonna be attending with us. Um, to that tournament, myself and both assistant coaches, as well as one of our former assistant coaches from last year, and then some former students are actually going to come back mm. and travel with us um, and help supervise that tournament as well. And then our final tournament that we've qualified for is the National Speech and Debate Association tournament in Dallas, Texas, June 15th through the 23rd. There's no school time missed to travel to this competition. We also qualified 14 students to that competition, which is amazing because that tournament is incredibly difficult to qualify for. Um, those students have worked really, really hard. We also are taking seven judges, coaches, and sponsors with us to that tournament to help chaperone those students. Um, we will be in a fabulous location, the Dallas Sheraton, where all the events are located in that same area. So there's not a lot of like movement downtown or a lot of um, moving and we're able to easily sponsor those students at those tournaments. Um, we have already raised $12,000 to help us pay for those tournaments, and we are hosting state in two weeks, which we hope to make more money off of <laughs> and show off our lovely new building um, that we are excited about at that tournament, as well as have a couple other fundraisers to help us cover the cost for that travel. Are there any questions? Carol? Megan, how many students do you work with? I have about 65 to 70 students. Super. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had 75 events qualified for state championship. In two weeks, we could only take 16. And that was the most difficult decision oh, of my yeah. life to get it down to 16. So, yeah. Well, congratulations Thank and you. thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? All those in, uh, in favor? Oops, I need a motion. Ann? I move that we approve the South High forensics field trips to Omaha, Nebraska, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Dallas, Texas, as presented. Gary? I'll second. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried, 6-0. Thank you Congratulations, Thank and, you. and have a good time in the meantime, too. We will. The kids are most excited about going to a factory where they can make cheese. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Uh, next on our action agenda is board policy with Lane Norris. Good evening. At the April 9, 2019 meeting during a work session, the board reviewed revisions on first reading policy for policy EE food services management. The board recommended certain revisions be made to this policy, specifically to the unpaid meal charges. These revisions have been made and are included in the board agenda packet. Please note that charging of adult meals and a la carte items will not be permitted. A la carte items may be purchased with cash only. Are there any questions that I can address at this time? Jim? I apologize. I, I saw this. It just struck me. Is adult the word? that would be best used there? Is an 18-year-old student, could they be considered an adult? Typically, we have the students, you know, to, to age 18, and then we thought the adults would encompass adults, staff, or guests to, to group that as one unit for the adult meals. Because then separating a staff, adult, and a guest, then you have to um, report those differently. I, I get that. Where we say there's no exception, that's what concerns me following that without clear definition. So maybe yeah. you're suggesting that it should say non-student adults or something like that to be more careful or? Uh, 
I think the reason we use the term adults, it's either adult meals or it's student meals, and that's the way the budget document is set up, and that's why the funding is reimbursed. And, you know, the funding stream, that's the state's, um, you know, that's it's their the category, terminology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if there's a way that we want to um, expand the word adults to be more clear. And even when we had the, the breakdown of, of pricing and from um, the Kansas State Department of Education, um, going off what Lisa said, it, it, it is adult and students, and that's how they classify that. Would, would it be helpful to simply define adult in the policy as a non-student? I know we could say I, adult I, meals. Well, I, yeah, that might be the best way because typically in most of our documentations, ad, adult means the teacher uh, or a parent, and student is a student as a senior, even though they may be 18. They are still a student in school. So that's the differentiation, and it, it's primarily established uh, by the state of Kansas and all their documentation. So there is a difference between student and adult, but do you feel like we need something extra for adult? Could it be parentheses, non-student? It extra might adult? be in the index. It might be. I'm checking. Okay. Or adult meals are not allowed to be charged. Is that what you were suggesting? Yeah, adult meals are not allowed to be charged. Um, we could just, I guess, it seems like maybe our attorney could uh, make sure it's okay. <laughs> My suggestion would be to not change the policy wording at this point, particularly because of the association with how things are funded from the state. But we certainly could add to that policy a simple statement that says, uh, for the purposes of this policy, adult is any meal, is, is a non-student. Students are not included in the term adults or something of that nature. Or the preface page. Right, the preface page. Well, I, I feel like that might create a whole host of other things we'd have to double check. Um, but we could either add a definition of when the term adult is used or student is used. Student includes those students enrolled in courses even though they may have reached the age of majority. So can we just write after adults, just put in parentheses non-student after that word? I think we'd want to define it more clearly. I think that might, I think without a definition, my, that's just my opinion, I think without a definition somewhere, that could just create more ambiguity. Yes. Mm -hmm. It would cause more issues for the rest of the policies. There are some policies that specifically do list the age. Um, I'm that word adult and student is used quite often in the various policies, so it would skew the rest of the Another thought, I guess, might be in the, the bullet under that, a meal account for students, for student meals, may only be used for students. Yep. Or a meal account may only be used for student meals. Could I ask a question? Is the definition student and adult all understood uh, by those using lunch program? I, be I believe we haven't had any issues okay. defining the two. Okay. okay. So as far as I know, I mean, as long as I can remember, student means those 18. Student. Right. And adult means... Uh, custodian teachers right and in my administrators. Tenure here I have not ran across an parent issue. when yeah. we set food program prices for instance which will come in the next board meeting it is student price and an adult, adult. Uh, an adult, adult, adult price adult, so, okay. Right. okay do you feel comfortable I, I appreciate the clarification on that it was just when we put no exception there I don't want to put a bunch of people into trying to figure out what which category they are yeah mm -hmm. okay I think I think they intrinsically no I guess I just to want to say that it probably ought to be defined but we could probably approve this maybe I mean it depends on the votes of course but um, maybe you could work on the clarification later we can certainly approve this policy and then if we decide that we say 
in June when we would look at some additional policies, we could certainly amend that index page to discuss um, a, a, a definition, a review of the definition of adult and under what circumstances we may need to could amend versus where it might create other problems. How about that? Madam President? Yes. I would like to do it that way because if I'm an adult or a student reading this and I don't know all the background of, of the definitions and the various ways we get our funding, I might misconstrue that. So I would appreciate that. Okay. Do I have a motion? Uh, Madam President, I move approval of the changes in, and I haven't looked at it again, policy, what are we looking at? EE2. I move approval of the changes in, a poli in policy EE2 as presented. Second. Jim. Okay. Any further questions, comments? I think that would work. So you Madam and... President. Aaron, get together. together. Aaron. Sure. Okay, I have a question. I think we're actually improving EE1 and 2, aren't we? EE2 is just the second page, right? Correct. So. It's policy EE. E -E. E -E. Policy EE. E -E. e -E. e -E. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can I guess, make sure that's right. Any other comments? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Thanks. Moving on to textbook adoptions with Lynn Exline. Good evening. Last meeting on April 9th, I brought to you a proposal to adopt textbooks for several courses. Those textbooks included Earth Space Science, Marketing, Financial Math, Medical Investigations 1 and 2, Financial Literacy, and Middle School Reading and English. Um, at that time, there was a question that was posed that I did not have the answer for about the textbook for the medical investigations courses. The teachers had said they were going to use that code blue textbook in both of those courses, and I was asked how that would work um, with kids being in that in two different semesters. And so I did email the teacher, and a clarification on that is that Although the book reads like a novel, each chapter really is a standalone lesson. And so there are certain topics that would work really well for Medical Investigations 1 and other topics that would work really well for Medi Medical Investigations 2. And so that is how they would use that um, particular text in the two courses. So with that, if you have any additional questions that I, or clarifications that you need, I'm happy to entertain those at this time. Questions or comments? Motion. Madam President. Jim. I move that we approve the textbook adoptions and purchase of textbooks for the instructional resources as presented. Second. Second. And any other comments? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. Thank, Thank you. Our you, teachers will be very pleased. <laughs> Uh, next on action agenda is our 2019-2020 handbooks with Shanna Rector and also Dr. Hardy. Good evening. I'm here to bring back the elementary, middle school, and high school handbooks. And since the board packet was printed, we did have a suggestion on the elementary wording. If you look down to the, the cell phone uh, suggestions, it was made that we were going to look at the cell phone or electronic device will be confiscated and taken to the office if it is seen. Since the printing of this document, we have had another um, suggestion, and so the cell phone or electric device, if seen, heard, or used, will be confiscated and taken to the office. So let me read that again. The suggestion to replace that one sentence would read, the cell phone or electronic device, if seen, heard or used, will be confiscated and taken to the office. That is the recommendation that has come forward, and I would like to bring that forward to you for you to, to contemplate as you're thinking through the elementary handbook. We didn't have any other suggestions to the elementary, middle, or high school handbooks. At the last meeting, we did discuss, or a question was asked about adding the term jewel 
to the high school um, tobacco and nicotine delivery devices policy. After um, talking with Aaron Wright, we have looked at that, and when we would respond with a specific brand name such as Juul, what that would then imply is that all others would be excluded, and we really would like to go ahead and try to keep this policy a little bit more broad because we know that popularity of devices changes, and especially brand names, and so by keeping it with the vaping and nicotine delivery devices, that really covers all brands. So I am going to suggest that we not add the term Juul to this policy. Okay. And so I am bringing forward the high school handbook suggestions as presented last time, the middle school suggestions as they were presented, and then with that modification to the elementary handbook. Okay. Are there any questions, comments? Do we need to do these separately? Yes, please. That's what I thought. Motion for elementary handbook. Gary? Madam President, I move we approve the 2019-2020 elementary student handbook as presented with the change uh, about the cell phones. Second? Second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Uh, motion for middle school handbooks. Jim? Madam President, I recommend. I move that we approve the middle school handbook as presented. Second? Second. Yeah. Comments? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried 6 0. High school handbook. Ann? Madam President, I move that we approve the 2019 2020 high school student handbook as presented. Second? Jim, any comments? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried, 6-0. Thank you, Shanna. And for the athletic handbook, Dr. Hardy. Madam President, there is uh, only one change in the athletic handbook, and that was to add an assistant coach for the high school volleyball programs. Any comments, questions? <clears throat> Madam President, I move approval of the 2019-2020 Athletic Handbook as presented. Second. Jim, any other comments? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried 6-0. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, on, on our discussion agenda, we, have, we do have a proposed textbook adoption with Lynn Exline. It's a bit unusual for me to have you approve textbooks and then bring another one to you on the same night. But the middle school math um, text committee was not ready to bring forward their recommendation at the last meeting. And we wanted to get the others rolling so that we could get them ordered in teachers' hands. So I want to visit with you just a little bit about this middle school math adoption. We did the same review procedure that we use in any text adoption, paying attention to um, the board policy that you've set forth for us, um, looking at standards and curriculum, making sure that we have effective instructional strategies, and then of course letting teachers add criteria um, that might be important to them and for their particular content area. This process was a little bit different than what I described as the other secondary processes um, last, at the last meeting. We started with a standards-based materials pilot. What we knew is that at the elementary, we had adopted a new um, curriculum last for this school year. And so we wanted to experience a little bit what the level of rigor in a standards-based program looked like, felt like, um, was that how that worked with kids. And so we used a module and just experimented a bit. Then the department um, met, and we had originally planned to wait another full year to do this adoption. But in a department meeting um, between both buildings, the teachers said, we really think we should go forward with this. And so um, at that time, we asked, what, what review criteria would you like for us to consider as we do the adoption? We did look then um, 
at outside reviews of the different text series that were available and consulting those outside reviews done by research organizations, um, we, uh, we identified several text options that had a strong alignment with the um, standards. And those were the materials that we requested for review. So we started with five different uh, materials. And we had an initial review by a representative group. What we did was we pulled a teacher from each grade level and they looked at all five of those and they narrowed down to two options. At that point, we pulled in all the teachers from each grade level so that they could have a half day to dig into those two best options and identify what was the best match um, for what they were looking for. We really looked during that phase of the review at the way concepts in mathematics were developed, the level of rigor that is required of, um, of students, the assessment pieces, and the teacher resources. Those were the things that were really important to our teachers. And so they spent about a half day each grade level looking at two text series um, deeply about those four areas. At that point, we took all of the feedback from sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and that initial group met again, and they considered all of that input to determine what the best resource option was. We knew we needed one resource, six, eight. We didn't want to do something different at sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. And so we looked at the totality of the feedback, and it was overwhelming. Um, we, there, it, it was very obvious that illustrative mathematics was the choice out of the two. And so at that point, we reviewed publisher options. This is another place where this adoption is a little different than the norm. This particular um, resource was developed a as a free open resource, and then several publishing companies picked it up to create additional resources to go with it. And so there were four publishers that we could choose from. And so what we did was identify the publisher that had the best match with what we were looking for in terms of teacher use, because the math content and delivery is exactly the same. We wanted something that was the most usable for our teachers. Then we went ahead and got vendor quotes so that the numbers that you see in front of you are the actual numbers. So the recommended text for our middle school mathematics program is illustrative mathematics. And we went with McGraw-Hill as the publisher. It is a 2020 publication date. Um, the text features that they, the teachers were excited about, there is that tight alignment with our content standards. Um, really strong embedding of the mathematical practices. And so lots of discourse with students, lots of multiple representations of mathematical thinking, lots of connections between concrete um, representations, picture representations, and those abstract algorithm kinds of things that we ask kids to do. The standards are noted for each lesson to bring focus to teachers in terms of what do stu students know and not know. Um, they liked in the student materials that there was ample workspace um, for middle school students. You know, that, that is, um, this is a workbook type book. And so um, when you do this particular adoption, you pay what you would pay for a normal textbook, but they send you a new copy each year for the student. So the student works right in the book. Um, so they liked the ample workspace. The questioning was strong and would help support the teacher in asking multiple levels of questions. And so our staff really liked that. Um, and then again, promoting student thinking and that strong tie between where kids have been and where they're going in terms of math development. So um, uh, the recommendation then coming forward is illustrative mathematics. I do have uh, text samples available in my office um, for you um, if you would like to review them, and they will be there for the next couple weeks. And then I will be back at the May, the first board meeting in May to ask for an approval. Any right. questions at this time? Questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Carol? So uh, will students take home this workbook at the end? They will. My very own workbook to keep. Okay. And I, they will be thrilled because everybody wants a math book of their own. <laughs> 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 will warm their hearts. <laughs> Good. Gary? Just so the folks out there watching may need to know how much textbooks cost, what are we spending on each student? About $100? It's about, I think that the actual price per student is $99, but that buys us a book for the next six years. Okay. 
So it all this particular pur purchase also pur buys us digital content, so students could access the book online as well. Uh, the other thing you may have noticed, there is a cost in here for $6,000, a little over $6,000. There are manipulative kits that for teachers to do a really good job of modeling math thinking and building that concrete understanding, there are manipulative kits. And so we want to buy those for them because that really does enhance instruction. And you'll notice we're buying those from a different publisher because McGraw-Hill doesn't sell them. Mm -hmm. But since it's the same materials. So, but about $99 for six years worth of texts. Any other questions? Okay, we will see you at the first meeting in okay. May. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Next on our <laughs> agenda is uh, school board reports and upcoming dates of importance. Sunday, May 5th, retirement reception and recognition at Lakewood at 3 p.m. Thursday, May 16th, Diploma Completion Program Graduation, Solana West at 4 p.m. Sunday, May 19th, our graduation, South High School at 2 p.m., Central High School at 5 p.m. And Thursday, May 30th, SAEC Graduation Ceremony at 7. Um, board reports, I'll start with you, Carol. Okay. On April 11th, uh, NEA Salina officers met with the superintendent and myself, and we had an opportunity, I should say they had an opportunity at that time to talk with Lynn about her role as interim superintendent. And there was also a lengthy discussion of issues surrounding social emotional problems that impede student success in school. And there's going to be an additional opportunity for discussion of those issues with Mike Lowers, who is Executive Director of CKCIE, and with Shanna Rector, Executive Director of Student Support Services, and that will take place in early May. Then on the 17th, um, Gabe and I met with CKCIE Board of Control, and one of the things that came up was hiring um, five certified staff positions for 2019-2020, have been filled at this particular point. A um, couple of them rather difficult to fill, as I understand. One of those will be Hannah Rivers, contingent upon her receiving her apprentice licensure. Uh, we saw her last meeting as one of those who was a Lyft scholarship recipient, so I thought that was of interest to us. Um, among unfilled vacancies, and I'm sure you can guess this, are three speech language pathologist positions and a school psychologist. Um, <clears throat> then looking to next fall, and based on increased caseloads, Mike Lowers and Jeff Hayes recommended adding three more professionals to the staff at South High, paraprofessionals to the staff at South High, and two new certified staff. One will go to Huesner and the other one will go to Cottonwood. These will increase the cooperative's costs uh, for the next school year. And also, expected increases come about in terms of salary and fringe benefits for employees, new technology, the computers are being phased out and we're going to Chromebooks over there, and inflationary costs for things like online speech and nurses and so on. Um, on the plus side, there's a little money, more money coming in from Medicaid reimbursement there is also a little reimbursement for Presence Online Learning, which is the company that we have to help in rooms where we do not have a speech language pathologist. And funding from the state is also going to increase a little bit for each of the certified staff members. Um, all of this led to a discussion of what do we want to charge for assessments next year and after considerable discussion, the group voted to increase each district's assessment by 7%. That increase for Salina will be $294,777. So that's substantial, but um, in the past, it's also been as high as 10%. One of the things that Dr. Hardy pointed out was what we have said before, that. CKCIE does an excellent job of managing resources. So 
this is operating bare bones to do the best service that we can for kids. So that's very important, I think. And then a number of us attended the chamber legislative meeting on April 20th. And I just wanted to mention that um, something that didn't show up in the paper, one of the things that uh, Senator Hardy said was that he thought more money needed to go into funds for pre-K because helping children early may prevent more costly correction measures in the future. So I thought that was notable. And also, Representative Clay spoke of engineering scholarships, whereby if a hiring company pays 100% of students' college loans, that company will get a 50% tax credit, and the student hiree would get up to $5,000 in tax breaks. I think that's what I understood. And so everybody wondered why they wouldn't do it for somebody more than engineering students. But I guess you start somewhere. Anyway, interesting meetings, all of them. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. Gabe? Um, attended the Board of Control meeting with Carol. And then last week on Wednesday also, um, Parks and Rec Advisory Board meeting with Jim. Um, not a ton of note to note for our group, but um, budget cuts are coming to that department. Um, like you may have read in the journal, uh, with a 5% budget cut required of all city departments um, because of some budget shortfalls. So um, it will be interesting to see how that pans out for a department that's already understaffed and with lots of deferred maintenance on things, but we shall see. So thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Ann? Yes. Uh, I stopped in for the JAG State Finals, the Jobs for America's Graduates which was at the Tony's Pizza Event Center uh, on the 17th, I think, and uh, met the state director, and um, there were lots and lots of people there. I couldn't, uh, I mean, students. I didn't find out if there were people from Salina there, um, but we got this, my husband and I s uh, stood in on a public speaking presentation by one of the finalists, and after he was done, he was from Kansas City, I think, but uh, after he was done, we realized that the rules said there were to be no um, <laughs> no outsiders in the presentation, so we hope we didn't mess up his chances of success. Um, but the state director had suggested we go in, so <laughs> I think we were okay. Uh, I, <laughs> but it was it was a kind of chaos at the at the Tony's Center. Um, interesting crowd. So uh, the next thing I did was to give it the You Make a Difference Award to Tracy Olson at Oakdale, the food service bookkeeper. And uh, it was at breakfast just before school started. And uh, Angie, the principal, uh, quieted the kids. And uh, I was able to announce to everybody that Ms. Olson had won this award. And the whole place erupted in cheers. And <laughs> Ms. Olson got tears in her eyes. So it was a great moment. <laughs> um, I also attended the Legislative Issues Forum, and uh, as Carol described, I guess the one part I remember is with uh, Representative Marshall at the first, and he had he was asked by our NEA person whether they might be able to do more for special ed, and he just said he didn't see that coming at all. He wasn't sure. I mean, he was sure that that wasn't going to happen, and. Uh, but he did talk about many other things that where they were spending a lot of money. So I suggested to him that they take a little bit of money from some of their big projects like walls and uh, <laughs> military and put it in special ed and it would help a lot. Um, he didn't say he would do that. But. I was going to say greeted with real enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, uh, I, I stopped in at the Central Jazz Band concert last night, which and they sounded really good. Thank you. Jim? I attended the Parks and Rec Advisory uh, Board with Gabe, and that is going to be an interesting situation as it develops and, and as we work through that uh, together. Uh, also got to present the You Make a Difference Award to the nurse at uh, Cottonwood. That was a unique deal. Got over there Friday morning just as everybody was coming in, and uh, it was really neat to go in there and, and visit with her for a little bit. Thank you. Gary? I attended the Smoky Hill Educational Service Center uh, board meeting, and from the last time I was on that board many years ago until now, things have changed in that everybody here probably knows it's a far-flung organization 
uh, as far as the school districts that belong and, and geographical areas have representatives to that board. And uh, it used to be people traveled to Salina and sometimes to Concordia to attend the meeting. Now, no two board members were in the same location. Everybody attended by Skype uh, mm -hmm. and video. Mm -hmm. So we could have people from all over the state, uh, or at least all of Northwest Kansas there, uh, to, to discuss this without them having to travel. Uh, we discussed the, and the only thing that was really on the agenda was the discussion of the evaluation tool for the chief administrator. So uh, we got that passed so they have a way of evaluating. Okay. Thank you. Um, I delivered a You Do Make a Difference award to Sunset School at fourth grade. Um, the teacher there, um, Mrs. Stauffer, Stauffer um, did an extra event with students in the fifth grade on the Revolutionary War. It was fascinating what she did, um, but it, her award was presented to her in her fourth grade room. And the students were a little unsure of what was going on at first because the principal walked in and I walked in and we were both silent. And, and it really um, startled them all. But uh, as Ann said, there was a lot of clapping done and cheering and they were happy for their teacher. I also read at uh, Coronado Grade School. Um, there's a favorite book of mine, and the author and illustrator had published a brand new book, and so the librarian gave me a call, said, I know you love this book. You want to come read it first time to us. So I did, and that was fun. Then also uh, attended Equity Council, and if you noticed in the Salina paper, it's posted that if you are interested in belonging to Executive Council, it's your time right now to apply and, and uh, see if you can be selected for that. Dr. Hardy. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Um, at the Board of uh, Control meeting, it was a real good meeting. One of the things I appreciate, and we talked about this a little bit, Mr. Lowers did a real good job of uh, preparing a budget for us to pass. I think the thing that's unique is we did this this early in the year. It seems like we've been uh, having a budget in June, and for superintendents that are trying to prepare their district budget, it's been a bit of a mystery. So to know exactly what each district's gonna to have to contribute is really helpful. So Mr. Lowers did a fine job with that. Thank you, Mike. Um, second thing I'd like to mention that Kyle Griffiths, principal at Cottonwood, has been invited to participate and uh, be a member of the Kansas State Board of Education Blue Ribbon Task Force on Bullying. And uh, KSDE has been working on this for some time and it's really an honor to be invited. Um, Cottonwood um, got a little bit of attention in, in a lot of positive ways, and uh, Kyle has, uh, does a great job, we know, as a principal there, so he's been invited to participate. So he'll be representing um, elementary principals, and of course, it's nice to have someone from our district involved in this so we kind of get the inside information. We know what's happening. So I just want to mention that. Um, I attended an interesting workshop that was held here in Salina last week on human trafficking, and uh, it was put on by the Kansas Attorney General's Office it was interesting because the presenter um, really made it um, a really personal thing because a lot of folks think it's just a city thing, um, human trafficking, and it's rural. Uh, the internet has really expanded that problem. Another issue is, of course, in you know, having two major interstates that cross right here in our area, that it's an issue. Um, one thing they talked about is the awareness factor is for us to recognize that when something doesn't seem right, that someone is willing to call law enforcement and speak up for people that are not able to advocate for themselves. So I think that's a lot of it right now is just increasing the awareness of just us as, as citizens. Um, but that's why I thought it was very interesting. It was a, the room that was there was a lot of folks who were all over the state that um, I just I guess I just think they did a really good job of making it personal. So I want to point that out. And the last thing is, uh, Madam President said this, we had our final equity council meeting of the school year, and we are just where we hope to be. We um, have a lot of good feedback. We did our surveys for our perception surveys for our staff and our students. We took the results of that, and using the equity council members, we worked and worked until we could get some narration for some goals, and we will be bringing those goals to the Board of Education uh, probably at the May meeting. So we want to get. We want to thank them for all their efforts. It's been a good year. This is our first year, 
our inaugural year for having Equity Council. And I have to also compliment the board. This is a unique thing. Not very many districts have an Equity Council. Not every district wants to recognize that it's something that's important, that we value every single student in our district, no matter who they are, no matter what they bring to school each day. And having an Equity Council really says that makes a strong statement on behalf of our students. And then the last thing, um, Let's see, uh, Madam President, don't forget tomorrow morning's Chamber of uh, yes. Commerce. <laughs> I will be there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next on our agenda uh, is executive session, and it is for personnel. Uh, how long do you think we need? 15 minutes. 15? So could I have a motion for 15 minutes, Gary? I move the Board of Education going to executive session at 620 for 15 minutes for the purpose of discussing an employee's, oh, is, is this the, yes. the, the, the work to request for leave pursuant to the negotiated agreement because if this matter were discussed in open session, it might invade the privacy of those discussed and the Board of Re Education reconvene into open session at 635 in the board conference room. Second. Second. Hand. Uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried 6-0. We will we start our meeting in the room just right next door. If you want information from this meeting, you are certainly welcome to stay in this room. After that, we do have a work session. Thank you for coming.